November 14th, Assignment 14, Investigative Research, again. After school, I went into Dad's office before he got home from his therapy sessions, sank into his big desk chair, and Googled egg drop ideas on his computer. Investigative research. Mr. Neely, I found things I had never thought of before. Plastic bags and cotton balls and toothpicks and straws. I made a new list, and when the office door opened, I knew it was her. What are you doing? Mom asked. I spun Dad's desk chair around to face her. Her eyes were red and blurry around the edges, as if she'd been sleeping for a thousand years. The orange of the setting sun lit her golden curls, unbrushed and unwashed, and her skin was paler than usual. But she looked like Mom, or she looked like Mom with something missing. I wanted to cry, but I didn't want to scare her away. In her book, she'd written, Science is Living, Science is asking questions and finding answers, and never, ever stopping. I wanted to scream her own words at her, and I wanted to say, why did you stop? But I didn't say that either. It's for school, I said. I wish I could have said more, something about the orchids and the prize money, but I wasn't sure how. I needed to keep her here. She walked over and started playing with my hair, so much darker than her own. I felt like I was five again. Egg drop designs, she read over my shoulder. Yeah, it's kind of silly. For some reason, her touch wasn't comforting. I felt like I didn't know this person. My stomach twisted, and I imagined myself standing up, sending the desk, chair crashing into the wall. I imagined shoving this not mom and screaming, Give her back. Give her back to me. Use cereal, she said. Pack the egg in a plastic bag surrounded with cereal. That's what I did when I was your age. And then she left the office. I did not stand. I did not send the chair rolling back. I did not shove or scream or speak. My heart cracked at the sound of the door clicking shut. But I did not cry. Instead, I added to my list, cereal. Step five, procedure. Time to create a plan of action. How will your experiment work? Take a moment to lay out your steps. Remember, planning makes perfect. Hashtag plan for perfect. November 22nd. Assignment 15, Battle Plans and Beetles. We had half a day of school today, the day before Thanksgiving, so Twig and I spent the afternoon comparing notes on Operation Egg. Twig had drawn a whole stack of egg drop designs and had started an Operation Egg binder, which contained all her notes and was covered in beetle stickers. Twig's flying to New York to see her dad tomorrow, but she changes the subject anytime I mention it. And anyway, I had my own things I didn't want to discuss. So we poured ourselves into our science. You mentioned a basketball, she told me as she pushed one of her diagrams across the shag rug on our basement floor, and I shouldn't have laughed. I've been thinking it could work. We cut a hole here, see, and we fill the rest with water. Then we can duct tape the top back on. Do you know duct tape is awesome? We can use it for like everything. I shifted on my purple beanbag. Helena had the day off, and Clarissa was working double time to finish her new app update before Christmas. So it was just the two of us in this enormous house. Sometimes I had the urge to scream in Twig's house, just to see if it echoed. I guess the basketball could work, I said, even though I wasn't too sure. I appreciated her for being nice about the whole basketball idea, but the diagram looked pretty ridiculous, to be honest. I mean, it was an egg floating in a hollowed out basketball. I have to, I have this one too. Twig handed me a drawing of an egg covered in cotton balls. First, we cover the egg in Play-Doh and then stick a bunch of cotton balls to the Play-Doh. When I was younger, Mom and I used to make Easter egg animals. We'd blow the yolks of the eggs and paint little faces on them. We made chicks and bunnies and lambs. The lambs we covered in cotton balls. This could work, I told her as I examined her design. I meant it this time. Twig grinned. She didn't usually focus or commit to a project, but when she does, she goes all in. She didn't seem to mind that I had brought any diagrams or notes of my own. Twig always provides the momentum behind our operations. She is bold and brave and smart, and she wins almost every board game we play. Sometimes I win when it comes down to luck, but I haven't been very lucky lately. We went through six eggs before the, we even started the drop test. They cracked in our hands as we built our contraptions, spilling onto the newspapers we had haphazardly laid out. The Play-Doh didn't work. We would, we would stick to the egg, apply too much pressure, and end up covered in yolk. Before long, the scent of raw egg and tangy Play-Doh filled the room. 
This smells so bad, Twig said, laughing as egg goo dripped from her fingers. She reached over and wiped her hand across my hair. Hey, I pulled away from her. She lunged forward, coming at me like a zombie with her eggy hands outstretched. You're a freak of nature, I told her, but I was laughing too hard to get away, and then she was lying on top of me, smothering me in giggles into egg guts. I don't think this is going to work, she said, sitting back up and wiping her hands across her corduroys. We might need to rethink this one, I agreed. Also, we probably should have done this outside. I guess we better start cleaning. Twig said she surveyed the destroyed shag rug in the basement. At least, Clarissa wouldn't be upset about throwing it out. She ran upstairs to grab paper towels and Clorox wipes, and maybe some Febreze, and I sat with her fallen soldiers. I don't know why I didn't tell Twig about Mom's cereal idea. I think I wanted to keep that to myself for a while. Fifty cents at Paper World, according to Twig. So get them while they're getting good. That is, of course, if you're a weirdo who wants a jumbo pack of Beatles stickers.